Now let's talk about AWS managed policies. As I have rightly quoted AWS here, an AWS managed policy is a standalone policy that is created and administered by AWS. Remember this line very carefully. These managed policies that we see here are created and administered by AWS itself. And as I told you that AWS managed policy is a standalone policy. Standalone policy means that the policy has its own Amazon resource name that includes the policy name itself. Like we have an ARN for I am read only access. And this is also an AWS managed policy. And one thing that you need to remember here is that you don't need to create this policy on your own. It is already created by AWS for you. And you might ask, why is AWS doing this? What is the use? And the biggest advantage of these policies is that they are maintained and updated by AWS themselves. In case a new service or API operation is introduced, then the policy for that are being created and managed by AWS themselves. For example, in IAM, we have a policy called administrator access, which provides full access and permissions, delegation to every service and resource in AWS. And that is not created by you or me. It was already created by AWS. Remember that. And here, you cannot change the permission defined in AWS managed policies. That's a good thing, actually. You don't have to, you don't need to mess up everything that is already there in AWS. And the biggest advantage of using managed policy is its inclusiveness. This is account one and it has users, user groups and roles. Like we can see here, we have group admin user Dave, John, we have user Jenny, we have role EC2 hyphen app and role third party access. And these managed policies like administrator access, power user access can be attached to them. But not just that, the same policies can also be used by users across accounts. And that is what makes it special. So these policies are already defined by AWS and can be used across accounts by anyone who wants to use it. Along with managed policies, we also have customer managed policies. Unlike AWS managed policies, with customer managed policies, we can create standalone policies that we administer in our own account. And these policies are referred to as customer managed policies. Here, we create the policies for our own AWS account. So you understand the difference? Managed AWS managed policies are being created and managed and administered by AWS, whereas customer managed policies are being created by us and administered by us for our own AWS account. We create the policies for our AWS account. And if you can see here, we have three customer managed policies, account admin MFA, limited admins MFA and EC2 access. These policies are created by us for our own account and thus can be attached to users, groups and roles in the account, similar to what we have for the AWS managed policies. And a very good point mentioned in AWS document is that a great way to create a customer managed policy is to start by copying an existing AWS managed policy. So we have a lot of AWS managed policies and if you want to create a custom policy from that, you can actually copy that AWS managed policy and then you can actually customize it for your requirement. And that way you know that the policy is correct at the beginning and all you need to do is customize it for your requirement or environment. Hence, if you would like to create a customer managed policy, go ahead and copy an existing managed policy and modify that for your requirement. So it's a very good thing that we already have the policies and if you want to make or if you want to make use of them and we want to customize them, we can do that by starting off by copying them and we can modify them as per our requirements. So just like I told you, there are two type of policies. There are managed policies and inline policies. So next is inline policies. These also serve a particular use case. Let's read this. An inline policy is a policy that's embedded in an IAM identity. So what is the identity? It could be a user, group or role. And the policy that we have here, the inline policies are an inherent part of the identity. And you can create a policy and embed it in an identity either when you create the identity or even later. I know it's hard to understand, but let me explain this. An inline policy is created and managed by you. I hope you got that. It is created and managed by you and it is embedded directly into a single user or a group or a role. And when you delete the user or the user group or the role, the inline policy is also deleted. And that's what it means when we tell it is an inline policy because it has a one to one relationship with its entity. If you see the image here, we have the policy account admin MFA. It is attached to a single group called uh, group admins. 
where we have two users, user Dave and user John. And the next one that we have here is role EC2 app has an inline policy called policy EC2 access. And the other one that we have is role app account, which also has the same policy EC2 hyphen access. And here you might have a doubt if these two are the same policies. So let's check the first point on the right hand side. Two roles include the same policy, the EC2 access policy, but they are not sharing a single policy. Each role has its own copy of the policy. Be clear in your mind that these are its own copies of the policy being attached to an individual role. Even though the names are same, the content might be same, but they are the own copy of the policy. The third point that we have here, you can see there is a strict one to one relationship between the entity and the policy. I have already explained this. The last point is also very important about inline policy. When you delete the user group or role in which the inline policy is embedded, the policy will also be deleted. And that's because they are the part of the principal entity itself. When you delete the user group or role, the inline policy is also deleted because it has a one to one relationship with its entity. But there is a question that arises here as well. When should we use managed policies and when should we use inline policies? That's a very good question. Let's see that. 